So, um, last time, uh, we had a, a time skip in the story. It was about, like, two, I think they said, like, two, two and a half years, maybe. Um, and all that time, uh, Jacopo's been looking after Morgana. Um, Morgana decided to take up this task where she uh, I guess she basically like keeps up maintains this little graveyard for these people um, that uh, basically they like die on the side of the streets with like no family or anything to vouch for them um, and she like basically transports the corpses to this place and puts up the gravestones and all that for the for the dead. Um, and uh, that's where we left off. So let us continue. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, we're we're in uh, Jacopo's uh, point of view or perspective at the moment. There was an element within the gang that gave me flack for all the time I spent looking after and caring for Morgana. Well, it was mostly just Gratian, actually. If I were you, I would have tossed that ungrateful brat out on her ass years ago. Would be another story if she were a looker, of course. Remember, he's talking about an 11-year-old. <laughs> girl here. <laughs> and to a degree, I understood where he was coming from. I certainly would have appreciated a little gratitude. On the other hand, all the time I spent with her, even if it was largely being verbally abused, allowed me to notice the more subtle changes in her mannerisms. And seeing that growth, however small, was one of the things that motivated me to keep at it. For example, a year ago, whenever I went to make physical contact with her, I would have to verbally reassure her I had no intention to do her any harm, or she was likely to start shouting. And even if she didn't, she would sit there the whole time I applied ointment, incredibly stiff. Now, she was more relaxed. I could even sense a sort of trust emanating from within her as my fingers rubbed against her skin. It wasn't my imagination. At least, I didn't think it was. It was something only perceptible through the act of making direct physical contact. That said, she is still borderline inscrutable. As I massaged the ointment into her skin, I traced the outline of her face with the flat of my thumb. The vast majority of her face was discolored, and in places, patches had festered and fallen off. The skin at the corners of her lips was shriveled and curled up, which I could only imagine was barely painful. It was rough and uneven, hardly a pleasant sensation and a far cry from the clean, smooth skin most girls her age would have. Maybe she's right. You'd think it would show some sign of healing by now if it were ever going to. Despite my constant insistence that she stay optimistic, it was probably me who was most disappointed, most frustrated at the complete lack of improvement. The ointment wasn't cheap, to be sure, but I didn't give a damn about the money. 
was the sense of hopelessness that got me. That it was all for nothing. Back when we first took her in, Maria had suggested the marks on Morgana's face might be a manifestation of something psychological or emotional. And I was beginning to think she was right. That wasn't going to stop me from trying, though. This was the only thing I could think of to do for her. No wonder. What'll she look like when she's all healed? Maybe she'll smile for once. I'd like to see that. Someday. Hello. Is anyone in there? Hmm? You need something? Oh, sorry. I got lost in my thoughts. I didn't realize I had stopped. Lost in your thoughts? That sounds positively dreadful. What's that supposed to mean? I was just thinking about what you... What I... What? Never mind. Finishing that's just begging for another round of derision. to a gash peeking out from beneath my sleeve. While it wasn't a very deep wound, it was hardly a mere scratch either. Oh yeah, that's uh, you know. I decidedly do not know. It's not important. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Use that on yourself. Huh? The ointment! Stop wasting it on my face, which is never going to heal, and use it on yourself. No need to get so worked up about it, Morgana. I am not worked up. I am simply expressing my discontent at your foolishness. Which, I'm pretty sure, is the definition of being worked up. Regardless, don't use any more ointment on me. Use it on yourself. I'm sure it will appreciate actually being useful for once. Last I checked, medicine doesn't have feelings. Really, it's not that bad. And besides, I'm only going to get more, so what's the difference? You're going to get more? And what are you doing that would make you say that? Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, too sinful to admit? You're an abhorrent man. No, I swear it's nothing bad. You win. You win, I'll tell you. I was hoping to keep it a secret. I'm, uh, doing a little training. Training? Yeah, crime and unrest have been on the rise in the slums. Or, well, not just the slums. The city proper, too. Things were quiet for a while after the slave revolt, but the Lord suddenly imposed a major tax increase about six months ago, which has resulted in a significant number of people unable to afford living in the city. To put it simply, the iron fist is squeezing even tighter than ever, and as a result, there's been a huge influx of people into the slums. You know how tight things are already, don't you? What do you suppose happens when you have limited resources and space, and suddenly twice as many people vying for their share? People have started trying to stake out their territory, 
and they're fighting hard to defend it. People are mugging and robbing each other over scraps. It's a mess. I... I had no idea. <laughs> Not many thieves pick makeshift graveyards as their marks, after all. Though in this case, I actually think you your being so isolated is probably to your benefit. But in any event, me and the rest of the gang have formed a band of peacekeepers of sorts. Peacekeepers? Is that not the city guard's job? And the guards have never given a damn about the slums. Why waste manpower on people who can't even pay their taxes? As far as the Lord and his men are concerned, we're just leeching off his land. We're damn lucky he doesn't make an active effort to chase us all out. That means it's our responsibility to protect ourselves. I see. So... You're training to use a sword as a part of this band of peacekeepers. In short, yeah. Interesting. Interesting? In what way? Give me the ointment. Huh? I'm not done with your... What's even left? You've done more than enough. Now give it to me. Here. Roll up your sleeve. You're not going to put it on me, are you? Like I said, I don't need... How many times have I told you the exact same thing? And how many times have you listened to me? This is payback for all the times you refuse to listen to me. You can't argue with that. Well, I guess I can't. What are you smirking about? Nothing. Try to keep this sort of thing to a minimum, if you would. Huh? Why would I want to limit my training time? I need to be prepared for whatever might come our way. That madman of a lord could be scheming to send his soldiers in as we speak. I'm sure there are others suited, more suited for the job. You don't seem like you would be especially adept with a blade. Hey, don't judge my skill by my appearance. I'll have you know I'm the second strongest member of the gang. That's very reassuring. Oh, you're on fire today, huh? Since you seem to have forgotten, I put up a damn decent fight against the Lord during the... God, what the hell is wrong with me? Why am I digging up some of her most painful memories for a cheap brag? Um, anyway, you get the idea. I'm pretty good with a sword, so you don't need to worry about me. I see. And out of curiosity, who's the strongest member? Excuse me? Why would she ask me, to my face, to give her the name of the one man stronger than me? It's not a difficult question. Some asshole named Gratian. Interesting. Well, I hope he remains number one, and you stay number two forever. And why exactly would you want that? The whole reason I'm training so hard is so I can surpass Gratian, and she wants me to stay below him? Unbelievable. I get it. 
It's easier for you to look down on me if there's someone who can put me in my place for you. That isn't why. No? Well then, mind telling me why? The strongest member of a group is the one who stands on the front lines. What's your point? The most qualified person heads the charge, yes. I don't see anything wrong with that. It puts them at greater risk. Wait, are you... Are you concerned for my safety? It's not you I'm concerned about. Your death will simply make life more difficult for the girls at the problem. Pfft. Well, would you look at that? You worried about me. I guess even you have a soft spot or two. Oh, for heaven's sake. I already told you that's not why I... I'm all done. Thanks. Now, I assume you're finished with your business here, so feel free to make yourself scarce. No need to be so rude. Or do you have some ul ulterior motive for wanting me gone? For one, it's impossible for the dead to rest in peace with you around. Maybe try thinking about the living first, for once. I've never really cared for how much importance people put on showing respect for the dead. It all seems so pointless to me. Your blasphemy knows no ends, does it? When your time comes, you're going to find yourself with no one to grieve over your loss. Fine with me. People are only worth their salt while they're alive. And what about the afterlife? Who's got time to think about the next life when you live in an overcrowded slum where someone might kill you one day for a couple coins? All the more reason to take it into consideration. The consequences one's actions in life have on the next should serve to encourage us to always do what is right. I'm not sure I buy that. I'm done with this conversation. I don't think there is any getting through that thick skull of yours. I, uh... If I offended you, I apologize. I didn't mean to. Say, Morgana, would you mind humming that song you're so fond of for me? What? Where did that come from? I'm in a good mood today. And what better way to improve a good day than with good music? I do not follow that line of reasoning one bit. Why should I have to sing? to make you feel better. What's the big deal? It doesn't hurt anyone. If you have even half a heart, you'll do this tiny little favor for me. Yes, because trying to manipulate me is a wonderful way to make me want to do anything for you. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. That was mean of me. Please? Well, that doesn't sound very sincere. But fine, I'll do it. Facing away from me, Morgana dropped to the grassy ground, staring off into the distance and beginning to hum. It 
wasn't a hymn or a requiem for the dead, but a folk song the girls at the brothel would sometimes sing. No one seemed to know who had written it, though. The lyrics were slightly vulgar, and people were supposed to clap and hoot along with the music. But Morgana only hummed the melody, leaving the rest of that out. In isolation, and sung with her voice, it became a thing of beauty. existed solely to be heard in her voice. Listening to her sing, I sprawled out on the grass. The blue sky spread out above me as far as the eye could see, and as I gazed up into it, all my problems seemed to fade away. That I lived in a dirty slum, that the Lord was digging his claws even deeper into the city, that I was in the middle of a makeshift graveyard for those who had no one else. It all just disappeared. I felt almost as though I had ascended to heaven. The first time I heard Morgana sing was, if memory served, approximately a year earlier. At the time, she was still completely walled off, much like she had been when I first brought her to the slums. She always kept her eyes on her feet, and she spoke in a soft voice, frequently pausing. She was wary of everyone, including me. One day, I went to put ointment on her face, and she shouted, roared practically, for me not to touch her. To be honest, it was somewhat aggravating. Another, I asked about her father, and she just pointed up at the sky, saying, he's up there which I took to mean he was dead, so I dropped the subject and got back to applying ointment to her. At some point, I started humming the song, which I had picked up from the girls, and upon hearing that, she told me she was quite fond of it, and then she began singing. Immediately, I found myself entranced by her voice. Though she always spoke in soft, muffled tones, her singing voice was incredibly clear, like I was listening to a chorus of angels. Of course, the moment I put that thought into words, it'll lose all its potency. It'll just turn into some loser's cheap pickup line. It really is something, though. If she told me her voice could raise the dead, I would be inclined to believe it. It's just that beautiful. While it was true, Morgana could be difficult and wasn't the most affable. I knew that, at heart, she was a sensitive and compassionate girl, that she would come to this graveyard every day and pray for peace, for all the forgotten souls was more than enough proof of that. Though she surrounded herself with high walls, she was probably the kindest 
most loving person I knew. And that was what drew me to her. It didn't matter what anyone said about her, how quick they were to judge her as ugly or standoffish. <clears throat> resting my eyes. Oh, and I was about to accuse you of being boorish for having the audacity to ask me to sing and then fall asleep. The fact that you are almost upset seems to suggest you want to be heard, despite how much you protested it. stage at the pub and have you sing for everyone. What? Don't worry, it'll be fine. You can wear a mask if you don't want anyone to see your face. You don't even have to get on stage if you'd rather not. You can just sing from behind a curtain. Who knows, you could end up being a big hit. Come one, come all. Hear the soothing song of the enigmatic siren. Absolutely not. No? I think it's a pretty good idea myself. Uh oh, is it because you don't like taking other people's money? I wasn't planning on charging. I just thought it would be nice if more people could hear... As I already said, absolutely not. And if you push the issue any further, I'll never sing for you again. Noted. Forget I said anything. It seemed like a good opportunity to get her interacting with more people, but I guess not. Such a pretty voice is wasted on just me. What? You look like you have something else to say. Nope, not a thing. Well, I'm not going to force her if she's opposed to it. Say, Morgana, there's something I've been wondering for a while now. You've never actually called me by my name, have you? And where did that come from? I've just been thinking about it, and I can't recall a single time you've done it in the more than two years we've known each other. Don't tell me you've forgotten my name. Are you kidding me? like that emphasis on remember. Is it really that big of a deal? There's rarely ever anyone else around, so it's not like you don't know what I'm talking to. Besides... Besides... I'm, I'm planning to leave when I get older, so I don't see much point getting very attached to anyone. Do you 
have a destination in mind? Not... not yet. Why are you thinking so far ahead, then? You're 11 years old. You've still got a few years before you're old enough to be independent. And you're going to spend that whole time keeping everyone at arm's length? about time you took down some of those walls. Might take a little weight off your shoulders in the process. I'm not going to say you have to, though. Anyway, I should head out. I've got work to do. Try not to stay out here too late, okay? I'll be leaving as soon as you're gone. I could walk you back, then. I can make it back fine on my own, thank you. As you wish. Hey, Morgana? I thought you were leaving. One day, I'll show you the world. Do you ever get tired of saying that? Gotta think big, dream. The world's changing all around us. A life just fighting to make it by day to day is hardly a life at all. I, I don't want to spend the rest of my days confined to this tiny little corner of the world. Well, Try not to let your dreams grow so big they crush you. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'll just have you sing for me if it ever gets to be overwhelming. Why would I be there? Why wouldn't you? It's hard to show you t the world if I don't bring you with me. Knowing you, you still won't know where you want to go. So I'll bring you with me. We can find a place for you together. Pretty good deal, huh? him walk off. Quite honestly, I didn't understand that man one bit. Apparently, a lot of people respected him, and he seemed to have a fairly large social circle as well. Would he go 
so far out of simple pity? Hopefully he doesn't have ulterior motives. At long last, your face is healed. I spent enough money on you to build a house. And you're going to pay me back tenfold. Now go forth, Morgana, and work. Be the greatest whore this Bravo has ever seen. <laughs> He's probably not that devious. Enough foolish speculation. It's going to start getting dark soon. I should head back. rather quiet at this time of day. The girls worked at night, so they were generally asleep while the sun was out. wasn't to say everyone was sympathetic for me. I should get a fire started. I had taken care of most of the cleaning before leaving for the cemetery, 
So my next task was preparing food for the day. Supplies had been scant of late, which meant today I was making yet another watery vegetable soup. on the rise. That would explain the trouble getting supplies. And here I am, completely oblivious to what's going on outside. From time to time, I would catch one of the girls saying, often with an uncomfortable laugh, she's still the same old Morgana. But personally, I felt as though I had changed quite a bit since arriving here, no longer being intrinsically disgusted by prostitutes was big enough, but even more significantly, how pathetic, I have become astutely aware of how much I was on the receiving end of others' generosity. Before coming here, the thought would have never even occurred to me. I was always the giver of generosity. The saint, everyone, man, woman, and child alike, came to for help. I hadn't told anyone what I was, though, so I didn't get any of that special treatment. Perhaps that was part of what had allowed me to change. Of course, because I kept all that tightly locked up inside, the only thing people saw was an aloof little girl. Finally, the coal was lit. Now, add tinder. Knock, knock! What? Knock, knock, knock! Huh? W what? Who's that? And who shouts knock, knock instead of knocking? Everyone else is asleep, so I can't just hope for someone else to deal with it. But someone's going to wake up eventually if she keeps yelling but everyone's exhausted and they need their rest. Knock, knock, knock! Oh, for heaven's sake, quiet down out there! this character. <laughs> ah, finally someone. Ah! W what? What are you screaming for? Uh, are you okay? Huh? Why wouldn't I be? I'm rather more concerned Your face! Look at your face! Ah, oh, right, my face. It's just... I heard they treated the girls good here. You can't be, what, maybe ten years old? And look at you. Huh? Unbelievable. Unbelievable! What kind of terrible man would beep a little girl like you and make you beep his poop and give you all his nasty diseases? Does she think I'm a prostitute?
Don't you worry. You've got a friend in me. No, that's not what. They're still home. Tomorrow will be a better day. I'm not... Oh, is that not because of a disease then? Yes. You're being tortured! What? Now that I get a closer look at you, your hands are all torn up too. Do they really bust out the whip that off in here? No one whip. Gah! I can't believe my eyes. Who would do this to such a little girl? Excuse me. I'll have to get the man in charge a stern talking to. It's his job to protect his girls. Excuse me. Knock, knock, knock. Shut up and listen to me. Ouch. I pray for your forgiveness, for I have disobeyed your teachings and raised my hand against my fellow man. Uh, nothing for me, the one who actually got kicked? Okay, clearly this is the uh, comic relief of this story. <laughs> Uh, Gratien wasn't already sort of a comic relief. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I get for jumping to conclusions. I've always had this super bad habit of letting my imagination run wild, you see. As soon as I saw you, it was like dark, dank dungeons. A little girl hung upside down, buck naked. A big, smirking, shirtless man holding a cat of nine tails. The girl's screams, echoing on the cold stone. Will she live to see another day? That sort of thing. It keeps going, too. Next, a dashing young man appears to rescue the girl. But he secretly... Shut your mouth for me, would you? Aye, aye. You're allowed to breathe. Ah. Okay, so, um, what was your name? Pronounce that Sharon? Okay. Sharon! Spelt C-E-R-E-N. That's je like jester, and ran like ransom. Shut my mouth for me, would you? I. But you are allowed to breathe. I. God, it's way too early for this shit. What is it, like noon? One? <laughs> Oh, nah, you're fine. I've known we were getting a new girl for a few days now. Oh, gosh. 
Ash or she's gonna be a prostitute. I just... Well, I sure wasn't expecting this. out. So this is the part where I get fired before I even start? Ugh. Tell me something, would you? Do you act like that around your clients? What? Is there something wrong with how I act? there for me. And for the love of all that is holy, hold still. Yes. So, what you gonna do? Just hush and hold still. personal there. Need to make sure you're up to par. Par with what? Um, is this necessary? Hello? Alright, at ease. Pass. You're hired. Really? Sweet. So what was all that about? You gotta have an exam first, obviously. I see. I'll tell you this, though. If you weren't cute as all hell, I'd have thrown your you right out on your ass. Ah! Really that cute? <laughs> You're making me blush. You realize that wasn't a compliment, right? Anyway, you start work tomorrow. Today, familiarize yourself with the rules and layout of the place. Aye, aye, ma'am. Morgana, can I ask you to show her around? a bunch. Much obliged. I'm already beginning to regret this. Talk about culture shock, though. I've never seen a place with a woman manager. Oh yeah, I'm not the manager. Just an old hat. Um, um, so where's the big boss hiding, then? No boss here. Just us girls. What? You don't have a manager? Really? Nope. You'll find this is more like a community than anything. A bunch of girls with nowhere else to go who banded together and built the place up. And it's been going like that for more than a decade now. From what I've been told, it started as just a little shack. Didn't even have proper flooring. But by the time I showed up, the facilities were a little nicer. The roof still leaked like a bitch, though. And we didn't have nearly as many rooms set up as we do now. But we worked our tails off over the years, scrounging together the money and time to patch it up and grow it into what you see now. And having someone specifically in charge of running the place does come with its own set of challenges. Does it? Sounds like a 
pretty good deal to me. Everyone gets to do their own thing. It's not that simple, unfortunately. It makes it more difficult to iron things out with the community and other businesses when trouble arises. And of course, it means we have no one financing us. So every day is a struggle to make it to the next. Any day could be our last. It could all come crashing down. Toss out any illusions of job security. Not so neato. I'm still super duper impressed though. Major, major props. You guys have made this one heck of a place for the slums. Yeah, I suppose. I'll take that, I guess. You don't sound very happy about it. Well, I mean, pretty much everyone who founded this place is dead now. It's one of the risks of the job. You work your ass off just to add another day and end up taking three off in the process. So once you've got enough to do whatever it is you need to do, you should walk out that door and never come back. Got it? Whether you've got debt to pay off, or friends or family, you need a little extra money. Once you're done, be done. You're not gonna ask what I need the money for? The girl looks like trouble. I'll talk to her and have some guys look into it. But you... You don't strike me as the type. If you were up to no good, I feel like it'd be pretty obvious. Besides, I've been in this business long enough to know it's not at the top of most girls' dream job lists. Most of us have been through some nasty shit. Other people digging around through it. Boss! Huh? Boss? What? You're sweet, thoughtful, and a heck of boss, so I'm gonna call you Boss. It's perfect. We don't have a boss here. Boss! Well, no harm in you taking a liking to me, I guess. Anyway, I'm gonna go crash again. Morgana can answer any questions you've got. Aye, aye! Also... Any more hollering while I'm trying to sleep? I'll rip that pretty little head off your shoulders and shove it between your legs. Got it? Yes, boss. Alright, well... I am tired, so I think I'm gonna stop here. Alright, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I think, um, I think this is probably all I'm gonna stream this weekend. Is this, uh, the House of Fox Mobile. Um, I'm not gonna do Horizon Zero Dawn this weekend unless I just get, like, really bored. probably be back again tomorrow and we'll do uh, some more of this. So, uh, good night.